John 17, 3, he's saying that um, the only true God and thou, Jesus Christ, that you have sent. Yeah? And it has more of an oomph when I show you, so I'll show you in the Bible. Um, but it's always one in the Bible or one book, which is amazing. So here, and that's how I see it. So you got here John 17, 3, and thou might know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So this is going back to affirming that Jesus Christ isn't God. He was yes. sent by God. Yes. And do you, Are you saying God is Allah? Yeah. I'm saying, look, let's not get caught up in the semantics of the name. Yeah, I even, know, but I, it's just as a Yes, 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 basically. To somebody else, he was saying God and Allah are two different beings, two different entities. But then the point he was trying to make, I think basically, the reasons Muslims like to use the word Allah and we avoid using the word God is God comes with all um, connotations. So God died on the cross. That's what Christians believe. No, we, we, God we, didn't we, die on the cross today. Jesus died. Jesus died yeah. On the I'll address that. Um, God gets tired. Does that make sense? God needs to rest. Like as Muslims, we reject those things. Like God is almighty. Um, God is alone, singular. God is eternal, self-sustaining. Self-sustaining. God is um, wasn't doesn't have offspring, nosy, born. Um, there's nothing comparable to God. So then, so then we like to use the word Allah because when you say God, you can add an S to it and make it God's plural. You can add an S and make it into a gender like Goddess. Make sense? So in Islam. Do you believe in Trinity, madam? I don't know what I believe in, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you when I get there. Let's get there together. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what time's the theatre? We've got a bit of time. It's a, it's a conversation I love to have because yeah. no one knows. No one knows. I, I would claim I know. You know, and how would you know? Um, have you died and been reborn? Now. What would you say is your criteria to know? And then I'll tell you what my criteria is to know. So for you to be satisfied that I know something yeah. or to, for you to be satisfied that you know something, what, what's the criteria? Do you know what you believe? I know. Now, um, I believe as well, but my belief is based on logic, reason, and as well as evidence. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, the Quran, the fact that it was perfectly preserved, that the message is perfect. The fact that there's no contradictions in it, um, the fact that it makes prophecies and it comes true, to me, that's my belief. The Prophet Muhammad, now, um, I was speaking to your friend in regards to the preservation of the Quran in a university in Birmingham. The BBC done an article on it, you can look it up, where they've got carbon dated chapters of the Quran that is the same as the Quran we have now. And we've got over 200 million people uh, memorize the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. So for me, I'm satisfied that it's been preserved. Now, if there's no contradictions, um, then it must be from God. If it has prophecies that's come true, it must be from God. If it talks about subjects like an expert, because God is the expert of everything, because God created everything, then it must be from God. And these are the things that the Quran has. The Quran was preserved for an oral tradition of memorization. So it basically came from God, Allah. Yeah. So it basically came from God to the angel Gabriel um, to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the final messenger. And another evidence of my belief is the way we perfectly preserve like the interactions and the message the Prophet Muhammad came with. His lifestyle is a perfect example. Now, there may be things which you may not fully grasp or understand, but fundamentally, you're not going to say this is wrong or you disagree with it. Does that make sense? Um, so he came to him and he, he preserved it. He was an illiterate man in the desert, so he didn't read or write. So he had scribes who may have written it. So that's the difference. You've got Muhammad. Yep. Muhammad, but we had Jesus. Yep. 
So they're not the same person, are they? Definitely not, no. Same no. God, different Yes. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he affirmed the belief in Jesus Christ. No Muslim is a Muslim until they believe in Jesus Christ, okay. until they believe in Moses, until they believe in Abraham and all the messages of God. Um, in the Quran chapter 19, we have an entire chapter named after um, the mother of Jesus, Mary. Yeah. And we believe her to be a pious woman and we believe in the virgin birth, we believe in Adam and Eve and so on and so forth, right? So the core element of what I'm saying is all the messages of God came with one concise, consistent message. There's only one God, worship God alone, right? don't make any partners with God, that they were the prophets at that time and they came with glad tidings of whoever obeys God will get paradise and whoever disobeys God, and whoever disobeys God, um, they warned of a punishment. So I'm saying to you that look, let's go back to what Jesus Christ taught. Jesus Christ never taught Trinity. He never said he is God. He never accepted worship. He never asked anyone to worship him. Yeah. So why have the Christians come with the Trinity? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're not three, but they are one. So basically... No, that's fine. No, no, no. It's some Christians as well. So I would say that's why I like to have a personal conversation. Yeah. yeah. Don't come. I'm not going to come with what Christians believe. What do you believe? Yeah. I haven't found that one out yet. Sorry, so, I don't know your name. Um, with one. Yeah. Okay, I haven't found that one out. Yeah. So let, let's go the journey together. Yeah. It's a short journey. <laughs> Do you believe in God? I'm not stepping in in front of any buses, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was dangerous getting over here, is it? No, we stay on this side of the barriers, all right? Um, do you believe in a God? Do you believe there's a creator? Let's go foundational, step by step. You don't know. That's, that's, that's the whole thing. Okay, no, that's fine. I respect that. Now. I'm not going to say no. Yeah. You're agnostic on the matter, and that's fine. Right now, would you. Okay, where did the universe come from? Okay. Science says it comes out of a explosion. A Big Bang. Okay. Now, what caused the Big Bang? Science agrees from nothing comes nothing. Science agrees the universe is created, so it came from the Big Bang. Yeah. I'm saying that Allah, God Almighty, caused the universe into existence. And that's the narrative the Quran comes with. But the time frame is the question, isn't it? Like, Christians believe it's done for seven days, but then is that seven days? Six, six days and God yeah, rested on the seventh. But is that literally days? Or are you talking millennial? Is it like six millennial? Now, so, I can't comment on the yeah, Bible. Yeah. And the Bible clearly says six days and rested on the seventh. The Quran says something similar, right. but it doesn't say days, it says six periods. Yeah. I don't know, and I think, yeah. with all due respect, um, if the Quran hasn't gone into details, then I'm going to say it's not important for us to know. Um, you're, it's fair for you to be curious about it, but the important thing is what's our purpose? Who created us? How do we prove heaven? How do we enter heaven? Does it make sense? Because can we all agree from nothing comes nothing? Right. I don't know, yeah, I suppose if you look at it that way, science is the fact that they don't know No, they don't even speculate that. Because yeah. the fact of the matter is, they can, because I had a conversation with a uh, professor of quantum mechanics. I was going to say Stephen Hawking, then I was going to say, you are in touch with it. <laughs> 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 I would like to. I've had I've had conversations with academics and I've watched academics, but right. I haven't had the conversation with Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking right, yeah. Not yet. Where's the bus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be back. Um, okay. So now, and he was talking about. Look, he can tell me, like he doesn't have faith. He ha he has trust and he has hypotheses, and he can tell me to the very moment to the split microsecond or whatever he said to when the Big Bang happened. But well, that's fine. Can you give me an example of something coming from nothing? It went quiet. Because that's it, because show me a practical example of something coming from nothing. So um, my claim, you can ask me for evidence or to prove it or back it up. 
My claim is, if you disagree with it, my claim is, is more logical and rational to believe in God than not to believe in God. Because Isaac, you know, we all think about it, right? But then the world distracts us. Children, TV, uh, going to the theatre. <laughs> train journeys over from the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, train journeys. Yeah. So I'm saying that why? Why do we get distracted? I don't want to go into conspiracies and how is for us to get consumer driven or for the rich to remain richer, keep the poor poorer. The fact of the matter is, regardless of why we get distracted, we are getting distracted. Yeah? Um, society tells us in the workplace, don't talk about religion, don't talk about God, don't talk about death, and no, don't talk about politics. And I'm like, those are the most important subjects. All it causes um, arguments. No, as long as you're not rude, vocal, offensive, does it make sense? Because I'm happy. I'm entitled for someone to have an opinion um, that doesn't agree with me. Yeah, I'm not going to push it down there, bro. Um, I don't even mind. They can push it down my throat. It's not a problem. But do it with a level of wisdom and respect. Does that make sense? Because at the moment, I'm having a conversation with you lovely ladies and I'm welcoming you to actually criticize and challenge because I want you to accept what I'm coming from. Yeah. Rather than... It's not a criticism, it's a, a question. It's not a no, that's fine. And that's the same. I think for any, any you know, I'm welcome. You're not, I'm not saying you're criticizing me. I'm saying that I welcome it because we've been we've been taught something and then I'm coming with something foreign and it's like why why should I leave this or I've rejected that and I'm happy you're perfectly happy right now with your life isn't it like why do I need religion why do I need Allah but I'm saying that um, Allah doesn't benefit from us we benefit from Allah we benefit from following the scripture we benefit from having the almighty, all wise, giving us a complete way of life. Because when we live how we want to live, then the shortcomings. I remember growing up, there were things that I was like, this is right. And then five years later, I'm like, nah, that's wrong. There's ways I used to treat women, I used to do this, I used to do that. I'm like, to me at that point, it was right. Now Islam comes along, comes along and says, no, this is wrong. You have to respect women, you have to respect this, you have to respect that, you have to behave in a certain way. Islam says that, look, what does it say? I was born into a Muslim family, but then there's a lot of cultural elements. And you have to remember, no, no, not even that, not even that, just very kind of ill-informed, changed by culture, changed by people, elders, and what they believe to be right. Their own opinions gone into it. And then me being born and brought up in the West, um, where it's kind of challenging a lot of narratives, and I'm like, well, yeah, you're right, I never actually thought about that. Well, no, all right, then that's fine. No, 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 but there was a point where I was quite similar to yourself, quite agnostic about it. Like, like yeah, I wasn't quite sure. But then it was actually Dr. Zakir Naik. When you get to Dr. Zakir Naik. Yeah, Dr. Zakir Naik. And he spoke about. Um, the Quran and how it's been preserved and the um, Quran and modern science and I'm like I didn't realize the Quran spoke about science I just thought it just came with some nice stories don't do this don't do that if you do this you're gonna go hellfire I'm like, okay but then I realized that actually the Quran comes with it's from God um, one of the miracles that affirms my belief is the miraculous nature of the linguistic miracles the um, the Arabic language and how it communicates the information um, the Quran actually gives a challenge that come with something like it makes it easier come with a chapter like it as in the Quran the chapter uh, the smallest chapter of the Quran is three verses 
So the Quran, Allah, God Almighty is saying, come with three verses like this and no one can be it. Because there's so many like meanings and so much depth to the language. Um, but going back... With Islam, like, this was fascinating because I didn't realize. You know, Islam, man can't interpret it. It's not for any Tom, Dick and Harry to open the Quran and say, Ooh, this is what it means to me. Because I didn't realize the, the Bible teaches that. But you say that, and then you grew up with elders preaching it in a certain way which you didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. They did. Live your life by these morals is basically what a Bible and a Quran does. It? This is this how you say that you should live your life. The way that they interpreted it and taught you, as some of the priests and would, that taught me. But then, no, no, the elders are a little bit illiterate with all due respect. Because what they were say, preaching. I'm going to move out of the way now because I'm sure you're going to be talking. <laughs> 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 no, because at the day when they spoke, they didn't reference the Quran. They didn't say, "Okay, this is what we've read. This is what the scholars have taught. This is what the prophet taught." Because you know, I'm saying it's not room for a man to interpret it. In the sense that the Quran came, how did the Prophet Muhammad understand it? How did he explain it to the disciples, the companions, the Sahaba? Yeah, and how did they explain it to the next generation? and the generation after and that's it that's the cutoff so whenever i say the quran means this for example chapter 5 verse 32 um, if you take a life it's as if um, you've killed all of humanity and if you save a life it's as if you save all of humanity yeah and i'll be listening when i was younger um, i spoke to a scholar and I was like yeah yeah that's talking about the believers yeah leave the disbelievers their life are valueless or whatever 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 but then he said no because the verse doesn't specify a believer's life it's a life does it make sense yeah. so when you get the western media propagating like these extremist views right can you don't see mainstream islam and you don't see um real islam then it's like yeah there must be a element of truth to what these extremists are saying I'm saying that no what these extremists are saying does not reflect Islam they they know now but not when I was growing up does make sense so then that interpretation it's got nothing to do with the scholar said that I spoke to he has to reference that the Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him this is how he understood the verse and we've documented these conversations and these things where it's like no this is how it was understood so then that's what I'm saying. There's no room for interpretation because it's not like I'm saying this. It's okay. What did the Prophet Muhammad say? How did he understand it? How did he teach it to the companions? And he has the authority because God gave him the authority. Does that make sense? Now you're thinking, yeah, and you, you know, you, you touched upon it. The messengers sent by the men chosen by God. The fact of the matter is, this man, let me quote the Prophet Muhammad in his final sermon. He's talking in front of hundreds of thousands of Muslims, right? Give or take, my mass might be off there, right? Um, How many? Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm not sure at that time if it was that many, but yeah. But uh, that's what I heard, but maybe my memories let me down, so I don't want to misquote, but a solid number amount, yeah? A um, good number of thousands of people, maybe even hundreds of thousands, actually, potentially. But anyways, I digress. Um, and he said, look, the best amongst you um so he said no white man is better than a black man no arab is better than a non-arab he was giving women's rights and he's saying um what differentiates the people is the god consciousness he was with the companions and he said the best amongst you are the ones who are the best to his to their w wives the best um, when he was giving the sermon he gave rights to women a man came to him and said, who should I give my companionship to? The most of my companionship. He said, your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your father. So it's teaching me the rank of a woman and the rank of a mother. So when you, at that point, 1400 years ago, 
you had churches debating um, about if women had souls. You had Greek philosophers debating if women had souls and um, owning women as once they die and trading and so on and so forth. But Islam came along 1400 years ago and said, look, um, the women have the right to annul marriages. They have the right to choose who they're going to marry. They have the right to choose um, own property. You can't inherit your woman or your wife and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? How do you feel about what I'm saying? This is mind blowing. You never heard this before. And everything I'm saying, I can back up, up from scripture. And because you have. Me personally, I don't know. But what what have you seen? Is it no 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 you. No, no, so I'll tell you something. You're, from, you're allowed to make that statement on based on what you've seen. So that's, that's, that's fine. But then it is a sweepy statement because how many Muslims have you seen? Does it make sense? And the fact of the matter is. I, I only know the white community. I don't, don't, yeah, that's. No, it's not like that at all. I, no, even, even like Newham, right? I live in Slough, does that help? <laughs> Like, Slough? Yeah. No, but but then she she hasn't got the same lived experience you have in Slough. I don't know where you where you live by the way. Same. I live I live in Newham. I can't say I've got the same lived experience as you living in Newham. Um, yeah, because different interactions. Like I had a massive culture shock. Like I'm now working in Romford. I worked in Grays. Um, I worked in Lewisham, I worked in Tower Hamlets um, and I just found each borough has a different personality yeah. based on the community and the cultures, and the cultures. Yeah. Even, even, even the police, how police interact with people oh, it blew yeah. my mind heavy. in different heavy, areas heavy, heavy stuff now, aren't you? yeah, getting deep in there now yeah, gonna get cancelled so we can go off and then... no, 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 I'm gonna hold on to it so you continue chatting to me so you continue speaking to me but I feel like I've spoken a lot. How do you feel about what I'm saying? I want you lot to like kind of... Yeah, because there's stuff that you said that I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. And again, it's something to like, I'm agnostic. And like I said, I don't know if I've ever changed my mind until I get through. But... You know? And then I'll come back and say, yeah, he's right. <laughs> no, no, but by then it'll be too late. Cause it won't all, be too late, all... will it? Because don't you believe that you will go to heaven and we won't keep us being honest any person any person who's genuine about their faith any honest Christian will tell you they believe all Christians will go to paradise and if you don't have the belief as them you'll go to hellfire well we have heaven, hell, purgatory yeah. we have like in between these as well. I, don't, I don't even think purgatory is for disbelievers in Christianity because I don't think all the major religions teach that if you don't be, have the right belief, and I'm going to be honest with you, in Islam, um, if you make partners with God, if you don't believe in the one true God, right, um, then the destination is going to be very warm and you're not going to enjoy it. <laughs> But where does it say in the Quran, in the Bible, you have to believe in God to go to heaven? Okay. Where does it say that? Where does it say that God said that you can't go to heaven because you don't believe in God? Okay. In the Bible, Jesus Christ was asked, what is the greatest of all commandments? He replied, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeah? That's not saying God said you can't come up to heaven. So, so, Okay, you have Moses who came with the Ten Commandments. Yeah. What happens if you break the Ten Commandments? You're not going to go to paradise, are you? You get forgiven. As a Catholic, you say, please forgive me and you get forgiven. Yeah, you get forgiven every Sunday morning. Yeah. Okay. Yusuf! Help me! <laughs> You're going for a higher... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we need ginger beard. Black is too much. I don't know. How are you? Okay. Which, answer, which question would you like answered first? Um, where does it say in the Bible you're going to go to hell if where you does have this? It say in any scriptures, Bible or Quran, that you won't go to heaven if you don't believe in God. Yeah. Because my understanding is God loves everybody. God and doesn't judge. Yeah. 
It's God to judge, isn't it? Yeah. He's, he's, he's the only one that's allowed to judge. Yeah. So God judges. Yeah. I mean, the Quran is very clear. If someone like. Uh, okay, we're about to I will bring you the Quran so I can show you. No, we got one. Here. Oh. Oh, we got one here. Now I'm just wondering because. No, no, it's a fair question. I've never seen anywhere where any, I've always understood that God loves everybody, regardless of who you believe yeah. in or not. That's what we were taught, or that's what I feel. Like. Okay. It didn't matter who you were. You could yeah. be like the Mary Magdalene prostitute. Yeah. You yeah. didn't believe in God, but yeah. God was going to take her to heaven. But do you think when, according to the Bible, when God de destroyed the nation of Noah, do you think he loved them when he destroyed them and punished them? But I don't know. I don't believe if God did do that. I, okay. This is the thing. I'm agnostic. Yeah. Satan did that. Uh -huh. oh. yeah, I'm agnostic. I'm, okay. trying to, I'm trying to get yeah. a belief in some respects. Yeah. But I'm saying to the young man here, yeah. that I will only know when I get where I'm going if okay. that is true or not. But I think if I would be going where everybody else goes yeah. because that's what I've been led to believe. I follow a, a, a pretty, a pretty nice knife. I'm not rude to anybody. Yeah. I'm not. I'm killed nice. anyone. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So objectively nice speaking, yeah. I'm a nice yes. person. I don't yeah. want to be nice. Yeah. I was Which is, yeah. That's what my mum says. One hundred percent. It's a human thing. Yeah. So I'm a human. Yeah. And I feel that I don't. I don't need to go. I wasn't brought up with the family. Yeah. But I don't believe that if I when I go, if I go when I go, yeah. because someone's gonna say to me you can't come in here because you didn't believe in me. Not not to I be rude, not all, to be rude. Yeah. But it seems like you don't actually believe in anything. I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. And not but like I'm not these conversations with yeah. different I'm spiritual. Yeah. I'm yeah. spiritual. Yeah. I believe that I yeah. lost people. Yeah. Around yeah. or somewhere, yeah. whether that's heaven, yeah. I don't you know. But, but it's like you're saying, I don't believe it, but if it does happen, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I believe I, if yeah. there is a God, yeah. He will accept me yeah. without but, me having to say I believe in a God. But you know where, where I would start from? Like, Okay, Christianity is it true? Islam is it true? Yeah. What does yeah. the Bible say? What does the but you got Hindu, you got yeah, what does Hindu say? All these religions. Yeah, I would I would leave all that to the side for the okay. moment, and then decide: is there a god or not? That's the question. Yeah. That's the big question. Yeah, isn't it? because then then you can if there's not if there's not a god, like if you if you're confident there isn't a god, then we don't have to worry about what happens after we die. Yeah. We don't have to worry about. What does the Quran say? Does the Quran say you're going to hell fire or not? Yeah, yeah. If there's not a God, then yeah. I'm sure I'll be going out killing those people thinking, oh, I see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. You know, when you look at the the idea that there's no God, no. I find it it's, it's a much bigger leap of faith than believing there is a God. That's what you were saying. That you've got, it's better to believe that there is something. Not better. I said it's more log logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. And we address that nothing comes from nothing and the Big Bang, like there's something powerful enough yeah. that must have caused it. Yeah. And then I didn't really get a chance to address the whole, there's too yeah, much design. Time, yeah? like, there's too much design not to be a designer, but yeah. I'll let Yusuf continue, you know, like Yusuf. The way we're talking now, yeah. obviously, without, I'm not a scientist, but you know, air is coming out my lungs and according to how I put my mouth, my tongue, my lips, sound is coming out. And then you're hearing it, it's going in your mind, you're thinking about what I'm saying, yeah. you're agreeing, you're disagreeing, and then you're expressing your opinion. Yeah. Do you think that that could realistically come, up, come about by random Randomness. We're going to go down the matrix, aren't we now? Yeah. We're all going to be doing the matrix. Do you, do you think that that could happen without a creator? Without a designer? Without um, some knowledge and power behind it? Like, it, it just it just happens. I, I, think it make, I think that makes no sense to just believe that there were some random molecules and they hit together and, and they kept on... Yeah, I don't know. This is the thing, isn't it? Like, if, if I put it on you, have you ever come across anything that didn't exist 
and came into existence by itself. Like, for example, the shirt you're wearing, the bag you're carrying, the glasses. Have we ever, from our own experience, our limited experience, have we ever seen anything being made yeah, with, without, without a maker? Me, I've, I've made my children. That came from nothing, but it didn't just make it Yeah, it didn't come from nothing. Even, even that is very, very... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go into detail, obviously, but when you think about the process, even the... I mean, as, as ladies... Please, you, please you, tell you, me you, how, how the baby was made. My parents have never explained it to me. As, 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 as ladies, you, you know better. You, you will know what I will never know. But the idea of a, yes, a, a life... Yes, we know. Yeah, a life inside you. Yeah. And that life, in the darkness, See, with no one there, me, the eyes, the ears. You're, you're, you're eating food, yeah. and then the food is going through your system yeah. and feeding the baby. Yeah. The idea that this is just... Oh, there's no God behind this, there's no creator, there's no maker. Without being rude, I think that's nuts. That makes no sense at all. What happens when people are disabled and stuff? Have they chosen to be disabled? See, the thing is, God is the most just, we believe. But the thing is, when you see someone who's disabled, it should, it should also cause you to feel grateful that you're physically able and also that person can be we would consider that person can be a test for us because we should look after that that person take care of that person and even, yeah, disability yeah, family, that's why yeah. but even that person with that disability it can be to the point of that dis uh, the disability is such that that person has no account in front of God that person is from the time they're born to the time they die they're purely innocent which can be a, a good thing and at the, at the same time even if you look at the disability, if you can compare the disability to what benefit, what good things they do have, the good things that they do have surely outweighs the um, disability. Like being able to breathe, having family to love them, having eyes to see, ears to hear, food to eat. So even if someone has something which we consider negative, the positives are a lot more. But the thing is, I would say that there has to be a God. Like, I agree with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Like, you know, the, you, go, down <laughs> you know the, the process of being born, the yeah. process of dying, the process of going to sleep, waking up in the morning, the seasons, the rain, all, all of these things point clearly that there must be a God. That's one. Secondly, you know the human uh, innate nature. In every time, in every place, in every culture, in every language, people have always sought God. They may have used a different name, they may use a different method, but people have always had a need to call on God. Like, you know the expression that there's no such thing as an atheist on a sinking ship. Yeah, I understand that. So, so usually, so we have that. We have what we observe, the creation around us. We have our own innate nature. And also we believe that messengers came, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, and they came with this continual message that there is a God, this life is short, there's going to be a life after. So all of these reasons... It's going to be really busy, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be very busy. But all of these reasons would point to the fact that there must be a God. That, I would say that is the starting point. I, I, not to be rude, I sometimes wonder, because a few years ago, it was quite common to be atheist. But, no, but now people, they're realizing, if, if you say you're atheist, you have to prove it. So people are saying, people are saying I'm agnostic. Because it, agnostic is like a, it's a cop-out. It's not a cop-out, that's not nice. Yeah, because, yeah, I, I am very judgmental. Yeah. I'm agnostic because atheists, don't believe in anything. Yeah. I've lost people and I want to believe yeah. that they're somewhere. Yeah. So I can't say I'm atheist yeah. in that respect because there's a spiritual side to it. Yeah. But agnostic, I'm not CV anymore, I'm not Catholic. I've got to say to the students, I've got to take all their knowledge. Just bug here. These are speakers, yeah. Sorry. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to soak you all in. I'm trying to yeah. like a RE teacher at school myself. Yeah. <laughs> but I was asking the questions. But I think you have to. Um, you can't just sit on the fence. 
you have to take a side. But I, I find agnostic is. I understand. Decide, but what is the side? I don't believe or not believe. Is there a, 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 is there a god or the? Can, can, can I? Can I? Can yes, I interject? Then, because then you, then you can take this. Then you can take the conversation further. Because a lot of the questions that were posed, you don't have the answer. Like in, in regards to, like. The, the arguments in regards to, you know, the consciousness, the self, yeah, um, and the miraculous nature of babies and birth and stuff like that. So it's like, we can leave the conversation and being like, oh, he made some good points, but you have to think like, okay, then what is the natural conclusion? Right now, did it happen by accident? Did the universe create itself? Because this is the question the Quran asked. So if the universe didn't create itself, then there must be a creator. That's a logical conclusion. Because there's a lot of question marks, but you're confident to affirm that you're not going to believe in a specific religion. So you're like... I've been persuaded. Because I think they're all religious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You all look like you need to have a nice cup of tea. I'm really picky now. This is rude, Zen. I crossed it. Don't that's rude. This is Ramadan. Nah, yeah. that's an oh, insult. <laughs> it's bad to say because you're agnostic. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Yeah. One thing, without without being a Muslim, the Quran asked me ask a question, which is which I find very interesting. It says. Um, how can you disbelieve in Allah when you are lifeless and He brought you into life and then He will cause you to die? So there seems to be a thing of when people say, I believe in God, when, they say, when people say they believe in God, it's like an obligation. I'm not sure if it is. We'll, 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 we'll blur it, we'll blur you out. We'll blur it, we'll blur it, yeah. So, it seems that there's an obligation. When someone says, I believe in God, I'm a Muslim, Islam is true, come to Islam, save yourself in your hellfire, that I have to justify why I believe in God. But here the Quran is asking the question, how do you not believe in God? Okay, yeah, I understand. So that, that, is, that is our question to you. I, I think if, if you look, it's very interesting. If you look at all the atheists or agnostics, I guarantee you none of them have an answer why they don't believe in God. They will all tell you it could be this, but we're not sure yet. It could be this, but we're still finding out. Yeah, it's a journey, yeah. isn't it? Your yeah. life's a journey. Uh, but I'm telling you, for hundreds of thousands of years, none of them have given a solid answer of why we exist. They give you possibilities, so none of them have any certainty. So, I would, as, as the brother said, the idea that there is a God is much more logical, much more common sense, much more evidence-based, whereas to deny God or to not to be sure is, is like blind faith, it's not even faith, which, which atheists or agnostics, they generally accuse religious people of. Yeah, but she's not believing there's something either. Something possibly maybe could be. Yeah, maybe it could be, yeah. yeah. Don't don't hate me for it. Don't be a hater. No 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 no, no. <laughs> that's not happening. But the thing is I don't want to use some emotional pressure but Yeah, yeah you are. But I will. You know, it gets, it gets more emotional. Come on, let's I, see what you got. I'm, I'm English, so you know, whenever an English person says, I don't mean to be rude, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to. So, so when did you? I don't mean to be rude. Yes. When did you convert? I converted when I was 19. Oh, okay. Which was, uh, Long time. 93, yeah. Ooh, shots fired. So I, I used to live in Reading. Oh, oh there you go, that yeah, explains yeah. it all. Yeah, so I, I became Muslim in, in Reading. Right. And then when I became Muslim, my mum was obviously very shocked. Right. And she thought it was a phase. Okay. Because it's interesting because it was before 9-11. So I think now when 
not everyone, but sometimes when people think of Islam or someone becomes Muslim, they become worried. Are they going to be an extremist? I, no, I think yeah. that, yeah. that is a media thing. Yeah, it's a media. Most people in the yeah. UK yeah. are pretty tolerant. That's very, very much so. Muslims yeah. are yeah. all yeah. Like, totally uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, We grew up with the IRA. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, that, that is and we don't think all Irish, and we don't think all I Irish people are Irish. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't yeah. think he's going to come over and talk to me, yes. and I never did. Uh, no, but my point is, like, so when I became Muslim, my yeah. mum, she didn't look at it like that. She looked at it as like, um, something foreign. Like, why are you following? Yeah, not, in a, not in a hateful way, but more confused. Yeah. yeah. Was she from a religious family then? No, I think like you. I was... Like I went to Sunday school. Yeah, Sunday school. Like I went to church occasionally, but mostly weddings, funerals, and if you would have asked me, I'm Christian. But my, my mum's outlook is she doesn't want to force me, and it's my and it's my choice. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So we were brought up like that. And how does she feel now? She's um, she my mum just. Nice <laughs> Like, no, my, my mum's happy from the aspect of marriage, grandchildren, and you know, uh, very family orientated. So my mum, she's very happy with that. And it's quite funny because my wife's relatives, the way they treat her is like, she's really shocked. Like, they treat her so well and you know, they put her on a pedestal. So she's happy like that. And when I talk to her about Islam, she will agree. Yeah, I agree with that. But I'm, but I'm a good person. I don't, I don't kill anyone. I don't. So she has this. I, I can see the. You try and tell me that, that I'm the same age as your mum. Thanks very much. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the, the out, no, no, no. The, the, out, the outlook. Yeah. So, I, I've got to a point where I explain to her, and the, the tears come in her eyes, where she, I, I think she knows it's true, but she doesn't want to commit. So that, that's. So the relationship is still good with my mum, I talk to her all the time, no, yeah. That's important, yeah. whatever you choose to do, yeah. Yeah. it's like your family is always important. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, so that's it, but still back to the same question. I'm not, I, I don't want you to answer now. I can't, they're still trying to find in the world. No, they have, because it's oh, the about that. you're alive and you're oh, dead, so it must be important. If, if you want, I can give you pages after. Let well, we were waiting for our copy so we can go off and have a read. No, no, no. Right. Once the conversation is finished, I'll give it to you. <laughs> we've still got about an hour and a half left. No, no, no. You're, you're, not, you're not a prisoner. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you one verse. Yeah. The Fine. verse you wanted. Listen. You're not, you're so this is... It's very early on as well. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's chapter three. Chapter three. Chapter three is known as Ali Imran. Imran is the father of Mary. Mary. The father of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So the chapter is named uh, is named the family of Imran because it co chapter three covers a lot about Jesus. Okay. But anyway, it says here what you asked, where it says that if someone doesn't worship God or become a Muslim, then the hellfire. It says whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, Islam means submission, submitting to God. Never will it be accepted from them, or from him. Sorry. This is our position from the Quran. If someone chooses a religion, a way of life other than Islam, yeah. it will never be accepted. Right. And in the hereafter, we'll be amongst the losers. Right. So this is very explicit. Yeah, but I said it earlier on. And yeah, but you're saying that's you're saying now everyone's got to follow Islam yes. to get into it. Yes. But that's what your extremists believe that's why they Christians and Hindus seem to be being killed by Muslim factions. No, there's a difference. I thought the, the Quran was telling you that God is the same as our God and we'll all be going to heaven if you follow the word of God. No, no, there's a difference can, because you, you brought up another subject. Um, so this is what Islam says, chapter 2, 256. There shall be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. The right course has become distinct from the wrong. So Islam, it doesn't compel people or force people to be Muslim. It's very much like the Bible, the Christian Bible, because it sort of contradicts itself as it goes. Is that I don't a, like the contradiction there. No. You said there's oh, no is that the contradiction there. But is that, is that yeah. a contradiction? The contradiction is look. Yeah, because you read yeah. out that Islam, yeah. if you're not is, uh, Muslim, the word of Islam. Yes. 
you can't go, we won't accept you. And yeah. that's fine. Now this yeah. one's saying... That we can't force you. So look, so look we'll, take, we'll take this <laughs> wait, person. Wait, wait, I don't, I don't you, see the contradiction you, there. You, you can tell me the contradiction. We'll take this person. Their name happens to be Bob. So for, right. for example, I, I don't want to offend anyone called Bob. Uh, no, that's Bob, yeah. Bob. They, they are called Bob because yeah. you're going to go down that line now where you know, you're going to... He looks like a Bob. Cisgender, transgender and all that now. So Bob. Yeah, it could be Roberta Okay, <laughs> okay, this person A. Person, person A. He's, Islam is presented to him or her and they don't want him. They say, no, it's not for me. Islam says there's no compulsion. We can't force them to be Muslim. But because the, the truth has been conveyed to them and after they understood it, they recognized it, they decided to live out the rest of their life. Not accepting what God has said, not accepting God's messenger, not accepting God's book. Then when they die, they will be asked, didn't the message come to you? Didn't you? And they will say, yes, we heard, but we chose to turn away. So that person, in general, will be punished in the hellfire. So I, I, I don't see a contradiction. We don't force them to be Muslim. But if they don't accept yeah. it, yeah. Okay, I was going to go back to the fight bit again where I was going to say that I believe that if there's a God, yeah. He welcomes everybody into heaven, regardless uh -huh. of the religion and past. Are we believing in the God and not, not the Islam? But the thing is, that's why I said if, there, if there's a God, we'll take for, for granted there's a God. Yeah. He would have to, he would. From, from justice, from logic, yeah. from uh, his mercy, from him wanting good for us, he would actually explain to us what he wants. He wouldn't leave it to so everyone, I, my own I opinion. Got, and I meet God, and he yeah. asks me that question, why do you follow Islam? Yeah. And this nice chap was sad. Yeah, you said, yeah. Sad, oh, Robert, whatever's easy for you. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. Robert, yeah. Islam, yeah. yeah. Why? And I say, yeah. Like, yeah, God, I'll see you. I want you to tell me. Can I come in? And he'll, he'll go, no, sort of. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He'd say, well, for me, because you were a good woman. Okay, how do you know that? Because that's what I believe. But he would say, I was a good woman. Would that be considered conjecture? Oh my God, they would use the words. It's just like... <laughs> big guns are coming out of me. We would say, look, God has said, he said messengers, he said yeah. evidence. And you're saying, but I think, in my opinion, have, in haven't my, you made yourself God? I've had a conversation with my Hindu friend yeah. who believes that Jesus has already risen. Yeah. And he, he's going to show himself in his lifetime. Uh -huh. So any time yeah. now. Yeah. He is absolutely steadfast in that belief. Uh -huh. Should I believe him? No. If somebody walks up in a thing and says, I'm actually No, you should only coming. believe me. <laughs> no, oh, so you're the second coming. No, 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 no. What, what I'm saying is, we're human beings. <laughs> yeah. We have minds, we have intellect. We need to judge things, we need to look. Yeah. Yeah. You need, you, we need to, we need to, we need to, uh, but we need to take it seriously. We need to take it seriously. Okay. Let me give you the Qur'ans. Um, I'll give you one more pack. That's what I was saying, because the young man was telling me about how diverse and everywhere is and how I wasn't, how he wasn't taking us. No, there, there you go. There is, something, there is something good in Slough. There is, there's yeah. mines now, that's but good. You and the, the Mars Bar Factory. The Mars Bar Factory, yeah, yeah that, that's about the only thing that's good. No, no, no. <laughs> I've, been, I've been to Slough so many times. Yeah. So. Anyway, thank you for you your time. you go to Mosque there, do you? Um, yeah. I've been there a few times yet yeah, for the Mosque, but yeah. Yeah, usually I'm here, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was very nice. Am I allowed to, are we allowed to shake hands, or is that a Ramadan thing you're not allowed to do? No, that? We, we don't do that. Don't I, I hope you're not that. offended. Okay. <laughs> Is that you don't shake women's hands? No. No, that's right or no? No, we don't, don't. No, we don't shake women's hands. That's it. You're, you're fine, yes, you're, you're right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And at the end of the day, that's just the way Islam sets the boundaries. Because it's like, we can shake a woman's hands, but am I related to her? 
or am I married to her? If not, keep your hands to yourself, mate. I'm old enough to be your mother. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's a general rule. Yeah, total difference. Respect for you. No problem. No, no, that's fine. I respect you respecting me. I appreciate all of your time. I appreciate the conversation. No, it's fine. What was that? It's not rude. I am going to have conversation. She's just stating a fact. This lady is like your lawyer. She she sits for you and then she she advises you. Don't don't say this. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Very nice conversation. Yeah, it's good. It's good. We should we should talk more. We should talk more. We're 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 here every Saturday and think think about some of the questions we had and the question marks you had and see because it's not it's not possible to reconcile in one conversation. But I think once you reflect on it, and then yeah, have, have some follow-ups. And I'll dye my beard ginger in the meanwhile, so I'll be on that level. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. Take care. Bye now.